because I've been talking to the people that you call your friends, and it seems to me there's a means to an end. They don't care anymore. And as for me, I can sit here and bide my time. I got nothing to lose if I speak my mind. I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley, Andrew Richter, actually doing a whole lot of Karen. Yeah, I hope that's not the new uh, theme song to the program. Yeah, it was a little, a little bit of a downer. Sorry about that. Well, you know me, I only listen to happy music, so I don't yeah. know I don't know who that is cuz I only listen to happy stuff. That's it, huh? Yeah, that, and there's just nothing but the Partridge family and uh, you know, uh Everly Brothers. I mean, that's right. just it, you know. I don't still got the old jukebox. No, I don't, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't have a <laughs> I'm not even fathoming a guest this week because, you know, I'm still just going to consider uh I, I won't get it this week, but that's still 2 out of 4. Yeah. In the last 4. Yeah, that's true. So batting five hundred, I still take. Yeah, it. that's 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 good. So enlighten us here, um, who that who that was exactly? That is, uh, you don't even want to guess, huh? Okay, uh, you want me to guess? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna guess that that was. Uh, I gotta think of a band. What what j- era is it? Seventies, eighties, eighties, eighties. Duran Duran. No. Oh, it's like one of my favorite '80s bands. Uh, I do like Duran Duran. Yeah. Duran. That's good stuff. Although I have to say the, the the "Hungry Like a Wolf" song, which might be their top one. Yeah, I saw it in a Freaky Lifetime movie once. Oh and boy! It, I I just uh, yeah, that was. <laughs> I, I associate it with this woman who killed her three kids, and I Farrah Fawcett played her in a Lifetime movie. I wow. can't think of it. It's, I, it. It's disturbed me ever since. So <laughs> okay. So who was that? Some some Metallica? No. Oh, okay. Phil Collins. Hey, I know him. Yeah, I don't care anymore. That's oh. the name of the song. It, I, it, okay, is, okay. Now that you said that, yeah, I've heard the song and I can hear it in my head. You probably got turned on to the song in an episode of Miami Vice. Ah, maybe. Pretty good show, though. I favorite I Magnum yeah. PI. But, oh, I like you know. that show too. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know this song. I I, I can still like visualize that. Oh. Now, is I, that Phil on his own or with yeah. Genesis? No, that's alone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. Well, at least I knew who it was. That's another. Yeah. That's another. In fact, that's, that's, two, that's two straight weeks now. Wait, wait a minute. What was uh, Peter Gabriel? We did yeah, a Genesis song. Look at that. Yeah, it was a okay. Genesis twofer, except All right. it was post-Genesis for both of them. But, yeah. All right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give myself a quarter of a point. No, you Just because I know that's, who they are. Oh, my word. <laughs> Is that is that how deep we have to dig now? I... <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I'm I'm still no. what six for a hundred and sixteen or something, something. like still that. Still not yeah. doing too good, but yeah. I'm you're, sorry. You're doing, well, for you grammar Nazis, you're though, doing or... better lately. Okay. So that's that's good. Yeah, the last year I've done gooder than the previous one. Yeah. That's all right. Well, Jay, I yeah. mean, uh, Memorial Day passed. Uh, uh, um, spring is, or summer, or whatever you want to call this, yeah. outside is, like, almost here. Mm-hmm. Um, had a great time fishing. Oh, that's Brought good. home a ton. Oh, can't uh, ask for more now. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm, despite Phil Collins' uh, p- pessimism here to start the show, yes. I'm actually in a semi-good mood here, but <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to sour quick. Yeah. And, you know, I, I tell you what, here at Community Solutions, I mean... We don't try to be negative, you know, mm-hmm. because, I mean, I, I just wonder, you know, that, that people are thinking here that we just bring them crummy news and we just are downers. And I, you know, I try so hard to be an optimist, but I'll tell you what, yeah. there are days in the political world where being an optimist is is almost sacrilege. <laughs> I mean, it's just, yeah. I mean, and and... What we're going to get into today is maybe the ultimate microcosm. I know we have something on tap uh, as, as an opening here. Yes. It's just a microcosm of everything that ticks everyone off. And you know what? I was so happy to be out of town. I paid no attention to this crap when it was going on. And now, of course, I have to deal with, go back to work when I get home. You know, but. Well, I mean, A, that's what vacations are for. Yeah. Uh, you know? So that's good. Um, unfortunately, you know, that's what a lot 
of people do is they kind of bury their head in the sand and this stuff happens and they don't know that it happens and uh, then they have to deal with the results of it and that's kind of why we're at where we're at but and that's a different song for a different day but uh ah. You know, a song uh, by a band called Paramore is, I'm pretty pessimistic for an optimist. And maybe that's what I should have used today. <laughs> Paramore, I've yes. heard of them. So, should we, uh, I guess, tackle our first... Uh, yes. We're, we're going to do a local lowdown, but it's not local to here. But, it, I mean, this is this kind of stuff is happening all over. And, it is. You know, maybe like not as say, blatant, but it is. You know, like we say, cities borrow from each other. Counties borrow from each other. Plagi and bad ideas spread like the Black Plague. That's right. I mean, they yeah. all get Fs for plagiarism. Yeah. You hand it in a college report, this would be an F. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so... This is from uh, the CBS local affiliate in Dallas County. Dallas, uh, Texas. I've been through yes. there. Yes, me too. Uh, D D Dallas County District Attorney John Cruzat announces he won't prosecute low-level crimes. We don't talk a lot about county attorneys on the show. No. Uh, it's kind of a huge mystery, I think, to you know what they do. and I, I mean, obviously, there are county attorney but that's something that we probably should pick up for a future yeah. episode and, and, and how many people even know that it's an elected position exactly at least here in minnesota i don't well, know if it's texas like that, it is as well but i don't know if in all 50 states it is i mean mm -hmm. louisiana has parishes and i i don't know that that it's it functions the same way they have the same authority everywhere right uh but yes 87 counties what have mm -hmm. we mentioned 87 sheriffs yep. 87 county attorneys yep uh County commissioners, soil and water. I mean, the list yeah. goes on and on. Out, <clears throat> out of the metro, it's even more than that. So um, there is uh, a lot of these county races are mysteries. What do they do? Who the hell are these people who are serving? Uh, who runs against them, which, you know, half mm -hmm. the time is nobody. And that's got to stop. Yeah, It just has to. Well, let's tell you a little bit about what this county attorney is doing. Um, he campaigned on criminal justice reform, uh, per the article, and announced he no longer plans to prosecute certain low-level crimes. Okay, Jay, let me stop you right there. Yes. Criminal justice reform is something for the legislature. Yeah. Okay, it is not something for... Well, I mean, you just... I, I interrupted you, but... You just stated that this guy is going to basically decide he's not going to prosecute certain crimes. Yes. Okay. Is that something that that? What if every police officer took that took that viewpoint? Right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna uphold the law. Yeah. One's going to. One's not going to. Mm -hmm. So, and 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 that's really the issue here. It's not whether the law is good or not good. It's you have a job and yeah. you took an oath of office to uphold the law, and you're not. Well, is that like me saying, well, I don't want to pay my taxes, so I'm not going to? Right. I mean, what's, uh, I'm sure this guy would go crazy if they, they didn't get every nickel from everybody in whatever county <laughs> Dallas is in. Right. So, all right, go on. I interrupted you. Well, no. I, it, that really is the crux of the story, is that this guy took an oath of office that he was going to uphold the law in Dallas County, and now he's deciding he's not going to uphold the law. Here's a couple of examples. He's already dismissed more than 1,000 drug possession cases during his first three months in office. Um, again, we're not looking at this as a good thing or a bad thing from a law point of view, but just that he's not upholding the current law. Um uh, he says he doesn't – on his agenda is not to ask judges to send people to the penitentiary for technical violations of their probation. Uh, for instance, not doing community service, not paying fines and fees. So if you go to court and you plea bargain down to doing community service, you don't have to do it because you're not going to get prosecuted. Oh, that's just great. Yeah. <laughs> you get your sentence to 100 hours of picking up, you know, somebody's mm -hmm. dirty diaper on the side of the road. But if you don't feel like doing it, you don't have to. Right. Lesson learned, right? We won't Absolutely. see that person there again. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're going to shoot straight from there on out. Uh, here's the real... You bring the chain gain back, I think, in, in Texas. Ah. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know, it wasn't long ago Texas was known for being, in some people's eyes, a little too, yeah. you know, 
Yep, that's true. You too know, too rigid on the law enforcement. Right. So now, I mean, that was not that long ago. Now we're mm-hmm. pendulum at least in mm-hmm. Dallas is swinging a completely different direction. Calling all criminals to Dallas. <laughs> Maybe Dallas they want J.R. Ewing and, and uh, the, them to all come back. and, and yeah. Maybe that was it. Yeah, so Larry Hagman, is he still around? I don't know if he's still around. I know he was a big drinker. I think well, his liver was effed for a while. Wow. Huh. I always liked him, so I always loved that show. Here is the one that kills me on this. Uh, he also said his office will no longer prosecute theft cases involving personal items worth less than $750 unless evidence shows it was for economic gain. Hmm. So you can steal that TV, just don't turn around and sell it. What if the TV's worth $800? Well, I guess you're in trouble then. Well, it's worth what somebody's going to pay for it. Well, that's true, too. What if you... You know, what if you had it appraised at seven hundred fifty? No, well, pawned it off or something. I don't know. Sold it on eBay. Yeah. It's not that easy to trace that stuff. No. Huh. So, so if I stole, not that I would do this, but I'm thinking about it. If I go to Dallas, if I <laughs> stole seven hundred and forty nine dollars out of somebody's wallet. They're going to prosecute that. That's well. I don't know if they will because really? you know you might need that cash. In but order that's to economic eat. gain. It depends. You know, if you're turning around to, if you put it in the bank, maybe that's economic. Wait a minute. Gain. If, if you... I've got seven hundred and forty-nine dollars to my name, and mm-hmm. I steal seven hundred and forty-nine dollars, I've doubled my economic wealth. <laughs> yeah, unless you turn around and blow it right away. Well. <laughs> Why, it's just stimulated the economy then. <laughs> it does not say who's economic gain. No, you know what it right. is? It's it's at his yeah. discretion. He's going to prosecute right. somebody. He's going to, pos- you know, whether that's whoever yeah. for whatever reason. Um, but he, you know, is not going to prosecute. Well, I mean, you know, to me, this is just a, and especially announcing this is just oh, a know. wide open invitation to it's you know it's kind of like saying look you, you, if you want to come into my house and steal something as long as it's not worth x amount of money I'm not going to do it I'm not going to turn you in but go ahead and take it yeah you know what we ought to do we ought to find out where this guy lives <laughs> and we ought to go there and steal bring like 100 people with and everybody steals 749 dollars worth of stuff <laughs> How about that? You know, like, we'll I take like a wheel. Idea. Everybody yeah. will take a wheel off his car. Okay, you know you know what I mean? You know, we'll, we'll take a chainsaw and we'll slice, like, the fridge in half. You know, somebody will steal the microwave. Somebody will grab one each chair on his kitchen table. Just so nobody steals more than $750. Well, that's that's the key, isn't it? And, and this guy is the press. He's not prosecuting us. That's what he says. Go scot-free. And I'll tell you what, Mr. Cruzlot, if you try to do that, I'm going to I'm going to sue you so bad you wish you died as a child. So I'm going to tell you something right now. I want I want this guy's address. And let's go down. Let's go down. We don't have we don't road worry. trip. You know what? I'll yeah. pay for everybody because we're going to get all the money back when we take it all. So I'll pay for everybody to go down. Let's all go down there and take <laughs> These things there, just come to me. Community solutions. These, uh, that's the thing. You know, we yeah. always have a solution that's to true. a problem. That's true. So I, I mean, I want to. I want this guy's address. Okay. This guy's a public figure. Yes, I'm so, sure it's available. So his address ought to be can somewhere. Probably go to the uh, board of candidacy or whatever. Yeah, the in filing. Yeah. The filing and. Yeah. Find out where this joker lives, and we'll go. We'll go. I, what do you want to bet? He lives in like some half a million dollar home or something. Some gated community. Yeah. Everybody yeah. will teach. Uh-huh. Everybody will take a window. You know, we'll all take something. And, and and just for you know, because I hate it. You, you, we have to ruin jokes now because people take you seriously, and it's, it's nobody just takes dumb. me seriously. Well. This is a joke. <laughs> no, it's half for for all of you people out there that actually you know want to cause trouble. Yeah, all you people who thinks Dukes of Hazard was a reality show. Okay, that was a joke. Yes, but not really. Okay, now if I were of a criminal mind, Jay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, if yes. Oh, that was fantastic. And and I'm sure that that is coming to more communities as we fall further down the rabbit hole. 
<laughs> you know, there are there are already laws that are not being addressed and and just being kind of glossed over. And this happens, I'm sure, with the county attorney. I'm sure, you know, the the DAs at, in different areas. Uh, you know, whether it's sanctuary cities or what. You know, um, I mean, you have examples where an illegal alien commits a crime and they just let the person go. You know, because they're illegal and they refuse to talk to ICE and they, you know. Yeah, I mean, just think if, if you know, uh, there was a major crime committed and the local people refused to share things with the FBI or something. I mean, somebody's head would roll. Right. <laughs> I mean, it would be a real bad thing, you know, if a criminal running around and the local government not sharing information. So, you know, I mean, you have but to and look and look, you know. There is a such thing, and it's amazing in, in two and a half years of the show, we haven't done a show on a constitutional sheriff yet. Yeah. Because there are elements of it that, um, you know, I don't want to get into it too far, but there are elements where I think it, it is uh, the right thing to do for a sheriff of a county or a um police chief of a city mm-hmm. to uh, is supposed to enforce their own laws, you know, and and the state has what I'm saying is the way it should go is the state should be enforcing state laws, county should be enforcing county laws, city should be enforcing city law. Yeah. And we kind of have that mushed up as kind of like county roads, city roads and, mm-hmm. and, and, and highways. You know, we have this convoluted a way that we enforce the law, and it is unequal. We're guaranteed equal rights under the law. So if 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 things aren't being done that way, and if every every law enforcement person would take the same attitude, you'd have different results. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to get into a constitutional sheriff. That's just going to drive me nuts. <laughs> because I got my own issues with it too. I mean, there's yeah. some things I disagree with it about. And I'm sure that's a future show, so we'll have to we'll have to dig leave everybody dig hanging. Yeah. So but this guy, this guy, I mean this guy this guy better get better get uh ADT. He better buy <laughs> stock in ADT or this guy's gonna get raided. <laughs> Rumor has it that uh, Governor Greg Abbott is not none, none too pleased with yeah. him and is uh well, gonna call him into his office. Well but, I'm gonna uh, yeah. but I'm gonna tell you something. The the governor um I don't know how much authority they have over an elected county attorney. Right. I mean, he, he and the legislature could withhold money or something like that, which, of course, they never do. They threaten to do it, but they'll never do it. Yeah. There are avenues they can take, but, you know, ultimately, I, I'm not sure that the governor has, unless the Texas Constitution or statutes say so. Right. I'm not sure what legal means he has. I mean, I think for the governor's sake, he should go out, he should expose it. Talk about it, make it an issue, um, put other people on warning, recommend a law at the legislative level. But to go in and try to take this guy out, I think, is the wrong right. approach. So Yeah, and I don't know what he's able to do. So yeah. Probably pound his desk and complain just like we are. <laughs> <laughs> You mean we have as much power in this as the governor? Well, you think Texas. the governor of the second largest state in the country would, you yeah, know, well. hold a little more sway? But you know, I don't know. I did, I'm sure the governor is looking up what he can do right now. I'm yeah. sure he has an army of people trying to figure that out. But maybe he is limited as to what he can do. Maybe he is. Wow. Well, now, now, yes. Speaking. Of everything that is wrong. And I mean everything. Because tonight, this is a nonpartisan thing we're going to talk about to me. Yeah. And I am of equal anger towards the left and the right. And the middle and the far right and the far left. They can all yeah. kiss my arse right now. I am just not happy, period. And I love, okay, okay, let me just back up a sec. We're, we're, we're going to talk about the, the, the legislative session wrapped up the other day. Yeah. And we're, you know, kind of staring at how it, you know, 
what we do is we take what, what, what goes on there and how it affects local government. That's yeah. always our big angle. Um, you know, a bonding bill failed, and, and it was originally $1.5 billion, and then it was parred down to $500 million, and then that, you need 60 votes in the Senate, and mm-hmm. that, thank God. Okay, right. that may be the one good thing. But I find it funny, Jay. Actually, I don't find it funny. I find it very... I can't say the word I want to say. It's very irritating. Every time a party is in the minority, I hear this. Now, I'm 42 years old. I've been in politics for 17 years now. And there's not a legislative session where I have not heard the minority complain about, oh, these bills are all cobbled together at the end. Oh, we've got to have single-issue bills, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Then that party becomes the majority. Right. And what do they do? Same, Same damn thing. thing. Yeah. And the House has been flipping back and forth for the last, well, it seems like my, you know, since the early 2000s, it's gone back and forth, back and forth, back yep. and forth. And every time the House minority leader will whine and complain, and the truth is they do it because there's some bills they can't stop. Yeah. And... Oh, this is, you know, we can't take these two things and hodgepodge. And we can't throw everything at the end. Then that person becomes the majority leader. And what do they do? They throw, every, they, for four months, they wait. everybody in this legislature ought to return their salary, return their stupid per diem, return their box lunch, return their parking pass, and say, you know what? You're a disgrace to the state. Yeah. Um, what did we just have? We just had four. You tell me. You tell me from January, whatever. Who cares when they started? Doesn't matter. January something to about a week or two ago. Yeah. Tell me one thing this legislature did. Yeah, I, I have got nothing for. Yeah, you. I mean, and granted, sometimes that's good. Right. In okay. this case, yeah. Well, I'll take this, nothing. But in this case, what was brewing the whole time? Right. Now, now here's an idea for you people in St. Paul. Local government, and Jay, you, you and I have been advocates of this. Uh, we've helped it happen in some areas. Yeah. All their negotiation, negotiations have to occur in public. Yep. Uh, they cannot get together uh, and shut people out and um, emerge with a compromise omnibus thing at, at, at the end of the year or, or whatever, uh, they can't do that. They have to hold, you know, uh, certain things at certain times. There's requirements for public hearings on this or that or truth and taxation hearings. Why doesn't the legislature apply that law to themselves? That would be amazing. I mean, why is it that they can, they can decide after four months of doing nothing that the, 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 the governor and the, the Senate major I forget the guy's name, the bald guy, Paul something, doesn't matter, Paul Goltzka, Gazelka, yeah. Godzilla, and, and the, the, the uh, what's her name of the poker party from Brooklyn Park. <laughs> <laughs> they can all get in a room and emerge, Jay, yeah. with 13 pieces of legislation right they can't get it done in all these five months but uh they nail it down in a grueling as they call it 21 hour special session let me let me clue you in i work 14 to 16 hours a day (laughs) and you can't pull together and and for 21 hours and you have to label it grueling what do you do you sit in a chair and Talk about stuff. <laughs> yeah, you tweet. You tweet every five minutes or something about, you know, if you're following the Fonz, Ryan Winkler, he's tweeting every yeah. ten minutes about who he hates. I don't know. I don't know yeah. what they're doing. Um, they just show up and sit in a hearing all day and whine and complain and then go home. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what they did, but third. Now, now, Jay, let me ask a question. Mm-hmm. Once again, okay, I always thought for the longest time Mark Dayton was the most ineffective governor, and I, I, I have to admit I underestimated Mr. Dayton. Yeah. He outmaneuvered, outlasted, out, uh, outfoxed the Republicans for eight years. Yeah. Tim Walls just did the same thing. Okay. Am I the only one, I may be the only one, who thinks his 20-cent gas tax increase was a ruse? 
Very well could have been. Because he, I mean, look, Tim Walls isn't a stupid guy. He had to know that not only would that never in a million years pass this Senate, mm -hmm. but there were enough House members that were shaky on his side. Yeah. Uh, that that was never going, that was never in the cards. So no. I think he could have just proposed it knowing yeah. that he was going to get to drop it. Right. He had his price. Right. And I'm going to tell you, the Republicans met it. Yeah. It maybe exceeded it. That's probably true. I mean, they're, they're not very good at uh, negotiations. No, and here's, here's an idea for you Republicans. It, 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 I, I wish you'd hire me and Jason as consultants. It would be the greatest move the party ever made. When, when, you, when you have a governor who is insisting on a monstrous tax increase, you don't stand there and scream, no new taxes. That's not a policy. Mm -hmm. No new taxes means you're just fine with the taxes we have, which is ridiculous. Right. And the Republicans for 15 years have not articulated a tax view in this state. They use vague phrases like being competitive, and, and, but they never, they never put that into any, any uh, have any weight behind that. No, we are one of the highest tax states in the entire nation right and you tell me you tell me what republican in this state articulates anything other than just vague phrases of we need less government we need more efficiency we need right. transparency we need uh, uh, to be competitive with other states that's what i hear mm -hmm. i don't hear any okay you know what you want a 20 cent gas tax Increase, pal. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to propose to cut the income tax by 70%. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> that's a negotiation. That's, that's bold. I like that. Well, but yeah. a 20 cent gas tax mm -hmm. is pretty bold. It sure it's is. It's almost doubling the, the gas tax in the state. I know. <laughs> no, no. Again, where is that? Where, where is the. Where, so if, if, if my position is no new taxes. But I'm not articulating anything other than that. So the governor comes, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll make it 15 cents. No, no new taxes. Okay, so there's an impasse. So what happens? They give in on 15 other things right. to get the governor to drop the 20 cent. Yeah, no, we saw Dayton do this uh -huh. with the, the child unionization, with Minsure funding, with all that. Yeah. He got that through a Republican House and Senate yeah. two years ago. They fully funded that they with, sure did. with the Met Council and everything uh. else uh, because in order for Dayton to drop all of his tax demands. Yeah. So how many times are we going to do this? We're a, a Democratic governor, and we're going to have one for the next three years, mm -hmm. at least, um, proposes a tax increase, which they're going to every year on something. Yeah. Fresh air. Every year there's either a bonding bill or there is a budget. And right. both of those are tax increase yeah. bills. And sometimes there's both. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> I mean, true. How many times are we going to go through this, this song and dance? Every time, apparently. I'm, I'm pretty sick of it. I'm just sick of it. And I, I don't know anymore. I don't, I, I have a lot of respect for certain individual members down there, but I, where this is going on, 13 bills. Yeah. Okay. In one day. It's ridiculous. And, and you and I, I have been sitting here all day trying to figure out what's in these damn things. And they've already passed. Most of them have passed by huge margins. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, the whole idea is you throw so much junk into one bill that they don't have time to read all of it, but they're in this special session that they got to get it done, they got to get it done, and so they pass stuff that it's got terrible things they would never, ever pass in a single-issue bill. <laughs> never, ever in a million years would they pass in a single-issue bill. If they had to put their name on it and say, oh, yeah, I stood behind this, they would not vote for it. But because it's an ominous bill omnibus bill and nobody's going to read this thing nobody is going to dig into it and find out exactly what's in it somebody will six months from now but nobody will now no us. And, and then everybody's gonna forget about it you know uh, we'll, i know we'll i know beyond to the next thing and and you know uh the second amendment stuff the the gun stuff that got dropped with with the gun control yeah. that was another bargaining chip to get the taxes through yeah yeah definitely 
Um, <laughs> I guess I shouldn't laugh. But there's, I just want to say oh here, because we're going to get into a little bit uh, some of the effects this is going to have on local government. And, folks, yeah. I'm going to tell you something. Jason and I are going to scratch the surface. <laughs> we could probably do a months of shows and probably will. Maybe because, we should. Yeah, because this will reverberate right for the next few years or at least the next two now they can amend stuff next session but that'll be a shorter session i believe it's only three months thank god mm-hmm. i mean might as well be a day why don't they just come for a day <laughs> past 13 bills you know, in a day that's something texas does right they meet every other year yeah I'd really like they still that. do that yes they do i like the idea of a unicameral legislature too yeah because let, let me, and I know this is off the subject, but but let, let me ask a question. Just at the state level, you're talking. Right, right, right. Not not in in. But again, I would in Washington. I'd go back to the state the appointing states, the senators. Yeah, right. <clears throat> um, I guess there's really no use for senators unless the counties sent senators. Well, right, but you'd have to divide it by legislative districts. I mean, you'd yeah, have to or maybe legislative everything. district would send. Yeah. But look at it like this. Okay. We have a house. We have 67. Le- By the way, you know we have more legislators in California? That's California's amazing. assembly has fewer for, what, wow. 40 million people in that state? And we have more legislators than they do. Well, I mean, it takes fewer people in California to screw up a state yeah. than it does here, I guess. <laughs> and maybe there's an advantage to that in yeah. that they're not spread so far apart that... You know, there's more of a local identity there. Right. But let me let me throw out something. You have a, a Senate district that has two House members and one senator. Mm-hmm. What is the point of having the two houses? I mean, the conception of the House and Senate at the federal level was that the House would represent the people and the Senate would represent the states. Right. Now, here, the House is representing half the Senate. And then the other one's representing the other Senate. Then we have the Senate representing the whole thing. So what is the purpose of the House and Senate? Well, and and that's why I mentioned, I mean, maybe we need to look at a different system where, you know, the county sends a senator, you know, or or something along that line. Uh, Maybe there's a whole different way to do that. I know that, you know, for House seats, it has to be based on population. But uh, for the Minnesota Constitution might have to be amended too. yeah, the Senate. But it's but it's it's not like. You know, the federal government, the Senate lays out, has constitutional duties laid out, whether that's treaty making, whether that's appointments with advice and consent, whether that's appointing Supreme Court. The Minnesota Senate doesn't do any of that crap. No, I I don't know that they really have any separate function at all. I mean, the House controls the purse strings, uh, you know, traditionally speaking. But what, what is the Senate? At a state level, really good for. I, <laughs> you know, it just, it just to me, I mean, it, it, th- there's only one advantage I can think of is they can slow down legislation. And that's what I was just going to say. They're kind of <laughs> like a check on each other yeah. so that you can't just ramrod something through. Well, maybe that's true. Maybe a majority party would be easier for them to ramrod something. Yeah. Of course, there's fixes to that, though. Right. You know, like bonding. We mentioned that the bonding bill failed. Well, one of the things about a bonding bill or capital investment bill or whatever they, that's technical name for yeah. that Bonding. has to be passed with 60 percent of the vote and maybe that's a change maybe yeah. just simply passing something 50 to 49 or whatever it is maybe that's we need a higher threshold right to do something which well, would which could be a, a a way to check itself right you know so i don't know all right way off the subject but anyway so 13 bills and, yep. I, and I want to tell you, I'm just going to name them. Mm-hmm. I love how it's Senate File 1. Because mm. <laughs> yeah. special session. Right. They passed an omnibus agriculture, rural development, and housing bill. That's one bill. So agriculture and rural development, you could argue those things are related. Housing? No, that that's not going to be rural housing. I can guarantee you that's not rural housing. No, and by the way, it passed the Senate sixty-six to nothing. Fire them all. It passed the House one hundred and fourteen to fourteen. My word. So it was just a tremendous uh, uh, 
Um, I, I don't have the roll call in front of me of who voted for what. I could look that up, but I, I'm sure I ha you, you, we have an idea of who voted for what, I'm sure. But um, So that in and of itself is three, I would argue, to me, agriculture, even rural development are not, don't belong on the same bill. No, I would argue the same, but at least you could argue they're related. Related, yes. Housing, no. The E... 12 education bill. Mm. And I, I, had fun. I bet you there's some money in that one. Uh, House file one. And I had some fun uh, watching. Uh, fun is the wrong word. All right. Mm. I'm, I'm not getting my link isn't working here. Uh, watching uh, Republicans all over so social media bragging about this, about passing this. Yeah. Uh, the big thing was the a 2% per Student, I hate the word pupil. Yeah, that's what I have in my eye. Okay, it's a it's a student uh, increase across the board. Yes. Now there's more than eight hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, and in fact, I think that applies to charter schools too, because really? they're a quasi. Yeah. I think they I think they use the same funding formula, despite their what their charter uh, separates them with. Right. Uh, so that is a tremendous amount of dough. Absolutely. And I guarantee you that was the governor's big, big thing that he, you know, wanted to have. Omnibus Environment and Natural Resources Bill. Mm -hmm. Omnibus Health and Human Services Bill. Now, I just want to say something. We've already covered maybe 65% of the budget. <laughs> Because I know yeah. education is one, health and human human services is two or three. Yeah, the transportation might be two, but um, jobs, economic development, energy, and commerce bill all together. <laughs> word, judiciary and public safety, omnibus legacy finance, pension and retirement bill, revisers technical bull bill. <laughs> uh, omnibus state government and veterans bill, tax bill, transportation bill, housing bill, all passed in one day. Now, there's one called tax bill. Yeah. Now, oh. if you are a Republican or a conservative of any stripe whatsoever, and you voted yay on something called tax bill, <laughs> you have a problem. <laughs> there were a lot of yays on that bill. <laughs> I mean, there were tons. Uh, you know, um, I mean, all of this stuff is taxes, but but you can't be any more blatant than tax bill. Uh, all of these is uh, well, this is just millions upon billions of dollars that that this state is going to spend just to to prop things up or to to. Uh, propping up construction, propping up the environment, propping up education, propping up. You name it, this is just meant to make people dependent on the government. Right. And I, I want to go the tax bill. That's one of the bills I want to dissect. Yeah. Because there is a lot in this. I mean, there's a ton in this bill. Yeah. You know, I, and I guarantee you, people might have known the cliff notes when they voted for this. Mm -hmm. There's no way that this this still is being dissected. It's been passed by both houses. I know the governor hasn't signed everything yet as to where as of today as to when we're talking. Here. Yes. <clears throat> but there is a array of taxes in here. I I'm just going to go through some of them quick. Property taxes, state aids, credits, local option sales taxes, TIF, public finance, provisions related to federal income tax conformity, income and corporate tax estates, special taxes, several articles of tax policy and technical re recommendations from the Department of Revenue, and the health care provider tax, mm. which is staying in at a 1.8 rate. All of that is in this one piece of legislation. LGA. The evil yes. local government aid yes. includes a $26 million increase. The total appropriations for local government aid is $560 million bucks. <sighs> And there's a city-by-city city, uh, PDF about that. Um, Minneapolis and St. Paul getting well over $100 million. 
Duluth getting nearly thirty million dollars in That's state unbelievable. aid. Unbelievable. Thirty million. I mean, crazy. Uh that's that's crazy. I, I mean, they had they had estimated what these cities were going to get in LGA under the current law in 2020, and then um, they they had the special session, and all it did was give more money. <laughs> yeah, it, they weren't getting enough. Apparently, you know, you had a city. Uh, like Brooklyn Center, that was getting one point eight million dollars uh, proposed under the under the law the way it was, and under, after the special session, oh boy, we ended up with two point one million. Oh yeah, was it enough that your automatic increase was right. already this? Right. Um, and there's a lot of pork in that. Uh, the bill includes a special uh, local government grants. To certain cities, with uh, uh, for little 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 projects here and there, kind of a uh, I'm sure that was between to buy off votes to get it. Mm-hmm. Local option sales taxes. Now we did a whole show on this, Jay. Yes. Uh, back last year, the bill includes general local sales tax authorizations or adjustments, and the the details in this are still being uncovered. For the cities of Avon, Blue Earth, I thought that was a county, Cambridge, Cloquet, Detroit Lakes, Duluth, Elk River, Excelsior, Glenwood, International Falls, Perham, Rogers, Sox Center, Scanlon, Two Harbors, Virginia, West St. Paul, Wilmer, and Worthington. Mm. Wow. It includes a new lodging taxes for Lake County, so the entire county. <laughs> Has got a lodging tax. La Crescent. La Crescent? Yes. Okay. Yes, La Crescent. I thought it was a French city. <laughs> uh, La Crescent. Plymouth. Yeah. My oh, town. Yeah. As so well that as. didn't go away, did it, then? No. Oh, no. boy. As well as a local food and beverage tax authorization for North Mankato. Yeah. So you're going to. They now have a. a um, uh, Food and beverage, Ted. They become New York. Yeah. Bloomberg, the may Bloomberg, the mayor over there. <laughs> uh, and then there's all this stuff about uh, a city. Uh, you know what they have to do to to get. Um, you know if they want to add their names to uh, the 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 local sales tax uh, options. There's a there's a. Um, process now that is spelled out hmm. in a little bit more detail, but that's so depressing I don't want to read it. <laughs> um, of course, noticeably, there's not a sunset provision. That's the one thing I always... Really? Why is there not a sunset provision? Well, why would you want it to sunset? <laughs> Taxes are good every year. Yeah, no doubt. Hmm. So, I mean, that's just... Look, that that's one bill, folks, yeah. that, we, that we just said there. Um... There's another one I really want to harp on. <sighs> now, h- hold on. Before you yep. go there, I notice like a lot of the same things come up. Duluth gets an increase in LGA. They're getting the uh, uh, s- local option sales tax. And they're also... They already have it. Oh, right. Yeah. And, and, and then the special law adjustments to TIF as well for Duluth. Yes, there's some TIF... Exceptions that have been written in as well. Again, details still coming. Right. Yeah, they don't spell it all out in, in the summaries. Thanks, you know, League of Minnesota Cities. <laughs> but to be honest but. with you, they're the only people who've who've right? summarized it yet. Oh, here's a here's one. Policy changes and funding approved to address housing needs. Hmm. Yeah, it's not enough that these cities, you know, build four hundred thousand dollar mansions and then complain about affordable housing. Right. And of course, League of Minnesota Cities, nobody there has any ideas on what to do, other than to, you know, call for more taxes and more, more uh, government spending. Numerous provisions to address the affordable housing crunch in Minnesota were included in the forty eight. Point three billion dollar budget 
agreement passed by the legislature on <sighs> the May 24th special session. Now, the omnibus agriculture, rural development, and housing finance bill includes $25 million in additional appropriations over the next biennium from housing programs administered by the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency. Now, we've talked about them before. Yes. The additional revenue equates to a 10% increase in the agency's budget. What? Now, listen to this, because a lot of this is grant money, which, remember, comes with strings attached. Yes. And, folks... We're not going to do it for you, but you could Google each one of these programs that I'm about to say are getting more money here, and you can find the strings that are going to come with it. One-time funding of $5 million for the Economic Development and Challenge Fund Grant Program. It just kind of rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Yeah, a nice little limerick. A total of $2 million for the Manufactured Home Park Infrastructure Grants. $3.5 million for the Homework Starts with Home. Huh? What? Program. Ever heard of it? Uh... A lot of these schools are getting rid of homework, so now we're going to yeah. spend millions of dollars on No, it starts homework? at home now, but they have oh. to have a home. Oh. Well. Continuation of funding for the Workforce Housing Development Program for grants and loans for workforce housing projects in cities outside the metro area. Policy language to allow cities as eligible recipients of grants from the Workforce and Affordable Home Ownership Development Program. Here's my favorite. Yes. We're going to have a commission. This establishes hmm? the Housing Affordability Commission. And guess who's on it? Oh. Now, don't look. Okay. Take a guess. I see you trying to peek over there. And I want your honest guess. Is this an eight-member commission? Guess who is representing this? Oh, boy. Who should I guess? No, it's not Kathy Hempkin or anybody like that. No. Take a guess. Lennon Carlson? Okay. You're close. Yeah. This commission will consist of two senators and two reps, oh. one from each party. Oh. So don't we already have a housing committee? Yes. So now we're going to have an affordability commission made up of the same legislature, legislators that can't do anything right in the first place. <laughs> the commission is charged with a number of duties, oh, zippity-doo-dah, including defining housing affordability. Do you need a commission to do that? No, I would just like go to Webster's Dictionary and look up affordable housing. And research, here again, now we yeah. back to the social engineering. Researching issues impacting housing affordability and home ownership access, providing the legislature with research and analysis to reduce the home ownership equity gap. So once again, it's that's a fancy way of saying too many white people are homeowners, and we need them honkies to quit being homeowners, and we need to put we need to put some chocolate chips in that vanilla shake. We need we we can't have that anymore. Okay, we've got to have we have we have a you're entitled to own a home of a certain value. Right. So we have to make so home ownership. Is a right. Home ownership is not only a right. It, there is a there's a there's a commission that is out there charged with researching to. to you know what they're going to do? Here's what they're going to do. All right, and I know I'm going off on tangents this week, folks. But you know, here's what they're going to do. They're going to come up with this. Will probably take like five years if I know the legislature. Right. These people will probably all be voted out of office before they they ever even get to this. They're going to they're going to come up with with. Statistics about those who are disadvantaged and those who um, do not have access to adequate transit or, at, wow. you know, or, or in, you know, the, the two, there's all these people on free and reduced lunch mm -hmm. and they're at risk and they need, you know, they need rigorous AP classes and they need, they need more recess and they need you know, whatever. And they're going to come up with this. It's going to be the same garbage that we hear just over re recycled into something different. Yep. You know, instead of, instead of, uh, you know, how many times have we renamed healthcare 
to, to Meals on Wheels, or, or, or how many times have we done that? How many times have we, you know, we, we played word games here. It's not welfare, it's assistance. It's not abortion, it's reproductive rights. It's not global warming, it's climate change. They're going to come up with some catchy acronym yeah. to, to, and then sell it, sell it, sell it. Get that sales. Mm-hmm. This whole thing will be a sales pitch. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's what they do. You know, uh, since when is home ownership a right? You know, there's lots of people that rent. There are people that can't afford, you know, to or don't have the credit to be able to to buy a home. And you know what? You need to work on it. Right. You You have to go out there and demonstrate you'll pay the money back. You're not entitled to have somebody loan you their money if you haven't proven yourself. No, they're gonna. No, they're gonna. Th- th- I bet they. Oh, get, they'll have a special program. They'll have a special fund now. Yeah, but, you don't have to pay it back. All right, now how about this one? You gotta love the League of Minnesota Cities. You know, um, putting a title on something. Yeah, it's amazing how many times I'm on the computer and I see President Trump's name come up there in a derogatory title. Then I read the article and it has nothing to do with the title set. <laughs> Here's another one. Yeah. Legislature and governor agree on a status quo transportation funding package. Let me translate that for mm-hmm. you League of Minnesota Cities people. There's no gas tax increase. There's not enough money for transit or bike paths or, or saltwater fish or green space or walkable walkable zoos or <laughs> or roundabouts or something like that. I mean that's that's yeah. what they're saying here. Right. Ah damn it, they're doing roads and bridges. Damn we it. need more libraries. Yeah. Ah oh, it's it's back to roads. Ah yeah. oh, that's so nineteen seventies. And that's yeah. what they're saying. But I'm gonna tell you something. There's a lot in this bill. Aren't there always? <sighs> All of these bills are just a bunch of, of crap thrown together. I mean, the, just the, just the summaries alone are just pages, PDFs long. And I'll try to give you some of the long and short of it, because quite frankly, I'm getting sick of talking about this. <laughs> okay? Um, so the gas tax failed. They, they, they wanted, listen to everything that was proposed. I wanted you to know what, what they tried to do, what the legislature tried to do. A 20-cent increase per gallon on fuel, an increase in the motor vehicle registration tax, which has been increased several times over the past few years, an increase in the motor vehicle sales tax, a half a cent metropolitan area uh, tax for transportation with most of the revenue being dedicated to transit. Doesn't that sound like the CTIB? Yeah, kind of does. I love it. We're going to take money from all you drivers, and we're going to redirect it to rail and bus, Ugh. bike lanes. Under the budget agreement, $93.5 million in general funds for the biennium will be distributed as follows. Now, again, this is a slice of what's being spent on transportation. Okay, right. Metro mobility, an extra $13 million just for that program alone. Deputy register reimbursement. What is that? 13 million bucks? <sighs> oh, of course, Minlars, our favorite oh, yeah. Minlars, $55 million. That, that entire agency, you people stink. Yeah. And you're getting a 55, your reward for the horrible job you did was to get a $55 million raise. Hmm. I mean, that's, Shame. that's, that's, I, you know, if you're a professional baseball player, fire your agent and hire these people to get you a raise. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea. I, I would, you know, even in the corporate world, that might not be a bad idea. No kidding. Hook me up. Overall, the yeah. transportation budget bill provides $264 million in funds for agencies over the next biennium. Hmm. According to an analysis provided by the Minnesota Transportation Alliance, screw them, uh, there is there has been an increase in the CSAH, county, state, 
state aid funds over the previous biennium of $128.3 million. How much of that came from the BST, Andrew? I had zero. Oh, I'm not governor yet. Yeah. Um, a big increase to MSA once again. Um, Sixteen million over the last by municipal street aid, which we've talked about before. Right. The MinDOT budget, their budget alone increased a hundred and four million bucks. My goodness. <laughs> I don't even want to. Oh, and by the way, just so you know, that both parties are neck deep in this. Yes. Both parties may as well just meld together and die horrible deaths. <laughs> The House floor vote on this bill was 106 to 19, and the Senate vote was 54 to 13. My goodness. What? And, and here's what I want to know. I thought we cobbled all these things together at the end. Yeah. Was the fix in months ago? This is a whole lot of stuff to put together in 21 hours. Just saying. Uh, and I mean, there's whole spreadsheets on <laughs> what's in there. <laughs> I don't even want to look at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what can I do but laugh? I mean, I don't even know what else to what else to do but but giggle about it. I mean, I again, I, I'm looking at I'm looking at a a, a, a water and waste water infrastructure gets their needed fund. I don't want to read it. <laughs> So I mean, look again. I, look, we scratched the surface here. I mean, this is this is literally scratching the right. surface. And over the next weeks and months, what's really in this is going to come out and come out and come out. Yeah. And you are going to get as angry. You're going to get. You're going to. You people are going to be even worse than me if that's possible. And it is possible. Yeah. I, I... I mean, I look at this, and, and it's just, again, you know, pages upon hundreds of pages upon thousands of pages of a pure drivel. Just, just we're, we're jacking up the rates on everything. We're, we're not going to take any, any thought at all to what the people of this state are going through. We, we talk about wanting to help the poor, but we raise taxes on them. We talk about wanting to have is, a, a business-friendly state, but we raise taxes on them. And is there anything more regressive? Is there any tax more regressive than a, any kind of sales tax or gas tax? No, because... It, it hits the poor people the hardest. It does. You know, and I'm not saying let's... Let's uh, destroy everybody equally. I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, you know, don't give me this, well, we're going to be concerned about the poor. They're, and then support jacking up their gas tax to 20 cents a gallon. That put a, oh, well, I mean, that would probably accomplish some of what they want with getting people to sit out on the sidelines and take transit. Well, but. that's true. Or walk or active living or walk on the regional trails, which you don't really take to work anyway. <laughs> So, I mean, but, I mean, this is just, I mean, look, folks, I mean, th there's two schools of thought here. Because I, I got into a little social media argument with somebody who told me, oh, the Republicans stopped this and stopped that and <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know what? If you want to pat your, you go to the voters next year with this. And you you might why don't we just stop now? Yeah. The, you go to the voters with that. Let's just I mean pfft. what we what what I, and the bragging about the school funding. I'm just how I, about this? I'm at council fully funded. Yeah. Um, not a drop of reform. No. Not one thing that we we got through. Nothing whatsoever. Not one bill to strip powers away from the Met Council. Uh, not, not one bill to even let's just symbolically pass something. Yeah. Met Council, you suck. Can we just pass that bill <laughs> or propose yeah. it? It was schools. It's like we keep throwing money at schools and calling it a victory instead of making them be accountable for what they already have. You tell me the school districts in this state don't waste money hand over fist. That's all they do. And and here's the thing. We're sitting there bragging about about all this money, this per student money yeah. per year. Remember, this is a two year budget. What happens at the end of that two years? That's they want more. Yep. And of course, Republicans now have 
agreed to this. Yes. How are they going to walk that back now? Yeah. The, well, yeah, wait a minute. Doesn't... Last time you were just fine with 2%. There was no reform, no nothing involved. Mm -hmm. Why this time is it a problem? And can I say one more thing, too? If I hear government surplus one more time, if I, if I I'm... There's no such thing as a surplus. A surplus means you overpaid your tax bill. And let me tell you something. If I went to the grocery store, okay, and, and I spent $65, and I gave the cashier 80 bucks, th the guy who owns that grocery store cannot say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to give you your change back. I want to keep 50, I'm going to keep that 15 because there's some spending I want to do on uh, you know, there's things I want to buy and there's yeah. there's I want to give this guy a raise and so I, I I'm not or I'm only going to give you five dollars back. I'm going to keep 10. Okay, that's what the legislature is doing. They're saying right. we overpaid our tax bill. So there is not a surplus. There's not a damn surplus. There's never a surplus. So can we just, I don't know if I hate that word or I hate sustainable more. Yeah. Like when I talk about the S word, sh yeah, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about surplus or sustainable or sustainability or sustainable or sustainable whatever. I hate that <laughs> word. I, oh my god, I hate that word. <laughs> oh, all you right. Get so worked up about that. I'm getting. I, I, good. I, 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 I'm on a roll. I, I, I'm on an incredible roll. Yeah. All for bad reason. You know what? Here's the thing, too. I started the day. I was so happy. I, 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 and, and, and I come here, and we, we read what happens. I leave for a week, Jay, and look what happens. Uh, don't look at me. I didn't do it. I, you caused it. I blame you. You caused it. <laughs> you know where I stand on this stuff. Yeah, I mean, what I propose is the BST. That's yes. the that's the that's the cure all for everything. <laughs> I'll shut everything else down and tax the bike bicyclists. Yeah, there we go. There's my thing. You know, if, if Walls wants to come, if I'm the leader, and Walls wants to come to me, like, oh, I'm not doing nothing to you past the BST. Okay, and then then we'll bring your yeah. bring your stuff over here. But <laughs> that's the one concession I'll make anytime. Yeah. So three hundred percent tax on all new bicycle sales. <laughs> Remember that was the episode I asked yeah. what a hundred times eleven was. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, come on, this, you know, it's good. High school is a long time ago. Best six years mm -hmm. of my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I went on enough rants. Did no, I not? that's good because you know what? We sit and we take this stuff in the shorts every time, oh, you know, God. And, and we just let it happen and we get angry for about three seconds and then we go back to our lives and we don't do anything about it. We just sit there and we take it and we wait for him to do it again and we take it. We wait for him to do it again and we take it. And half the time, I mean, when it comes to school districts, we approve it ourselves, Yeah. you know, and we don't make the school district account for any of their spending, but yet it's being done at every level government, whether it's the state level, the county level, the school level, the city level, they're all doing it. They are all spending our money and they are raising our taxes every time they get together and try to pass new spending bills. That's what they are. They're spending bills. They're looking for ways to take your money and use it. And, and, yes. and if they have more of your money than they anticipated, oh, no, 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 that's theirs. Oh, yeah. No, you don't get it back. But I mean, but I, I've said this too about property rights, Jay, and you and I talk a lot about property rights. Mm -hmm. My money is my property. Yes. Okay. So the I so you know what, but when we talk about property rights, you know, often people think of you know how high you can build your shed, but ultimately, I mean, what are what are the things you know that that you're entitled to with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Mm hmm. And think about money. Think about water. Think about you know things that government has just total control over. Yeah. I mean, if the legislature wants to pass a law to tax a hundred percent of their income, there is nothing that says they can't do it. No. And in fact, I mean, when you look back at during you know um, throughout the 1900s, there were there World were World War II. In World War II, there was a very high level of income tax. Mm -hmm. And it actually didn't really come and, down until President Kennedy. Right. Yeah. Well, and I'll tell you, I'll even take another thing that, that you want a lesson in income taxes and what to do. Uh, go back and study the Civil War. Mm -hmm. There was an income tax in the Civil War. Yeah. And it was repealed after the war. Yes, and, it was. And everybody, it was almost unanimously passed. And President Lincoln had 
already before he died had was was going to go you know was going to support repeal right and Andrew Johnson a very different politician than him oh boy was he yeah uh, had <laughs> uh, issued some sort of statement about mm. how you know we are not going to use this as a permanent tax this was an emergency measure and we are going to repeal this and it was repealed and it was repealed retroactive to when the war ended because mm -hmm. congress didn't meet till december in 1865, yeah. they made it retroactive to Lee's surrender at Appomattox. You know, uh, one of the very few good things that Andrew Johnson did. Yeah, well, I yes. still think he was railroaded in, well. in impeachment, but that's yeah. just me. Well. I don't care for him. Yeah, but, I don't but, care for him either. But uh, he was certainly no Lincoln. But uh, And you wonder how he got on that ticket. Yeah, I don't know. There was just no thought given to vice president back then. Right. Which makes just... I mean, Lincoln... Scratch your head. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't understand it either. But... No. Makes no uh. sense. <laughs> just think of what vice president is today. Yeah. The, the thought put into... Oh, oh boy, I know. Who's going to... You know, yeah. who could who could be a heartbeat away? Right. And yeah, well, we'll we'll take this guy because he's a he's a, a unionist from Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, that was about the thought put into it. I mean, you think think back, think back. He, uh, uh, Grover Cleveland, who was his vice president? You know, mm -hmm. uh, Ulysses Grant, who was his vice president? Right. Nobody and knows. Nobody knows. Yeah. And so that's the thought that was put into it. You know. Yeah. So, no. I, I, <laughs> And now, though, I mean, there, there's thought put into it, but it's less about who's more qualified to run a country and be a heartbeat away from the presidency. And it, it, it's more about who is this person? What yeah. do they represent? You know, how, how can this help the president get elected? Yeah, balance the ticket. That's ridiculous. You're, you're right. I, I do think Mike Pence was a little bit of an exception to that. Yeah, a little bit. Although I think I think there was thought put into it by President Trump that he needed to shore up some constituencies. But mm -hmm. I I don't uh, Trump was going to win Indiana no matter what. I right. don't think it was made for that. But yeah, definitely uh, that is definitely a, a major thought process that goes on. So. Yeah, it's a shame. Anyhow. Yeah, anyhow. How, how was that? How was we, I'm glad we had that discussion because it brought me down a little bit. Calm me down a little. That's good. <laughs> That's good. I'll try not to escalate your blood pressure during the closing. <laughs> but you out there in the listening audience, I want to escalate yours a little bit. And why is that? Because, like I was saying before, we have them raising our taxes at the federal level, the state level, the county level, the city level, the school level. And what do we do about it? We don't do anything. And we elect the same people over and over and over again that keep agreeing to these horrendous bills. And we don't do anything. We let them go through a whole primary season without any competition. And we just let them go straight to the general election. Well, we, we can't elect a Democrat. Well, no, you can't. So what do you do? You vote for the same crappy person that raised your taxes last time because you didn't put anybody up. Well, how do you do that? You got to build a base. You got to build a farm team. You got to have, you got to have a whole bullpen of people ready to put the next one in when the first one peters out on you. You know, if they're not going to hold by what they promised you that they would do when you elected them into office, you kick their butt to the curb and you put in the next player. And if he does it, you kick him out and put in the next player. And if she does it, you kick him out and put in the next player. And you go on down the line until you find somebody that is worth their salt. And how do you do that? You get people on the county boards. You get people on the city council. You get people on to uh, school boards. And how do you get them there? You start them out in advisory commissions, and they learn the ropes, and they learn the business, and they learn how it works, and they learn the in and outs, and, the, and they work hard. And, you know, the, the, we forgo these things all the time, and instead we just throw up that 23-year-old that wants to run for governor, and we wonder why we lose all the time. <laughs> We don't run anybody principled for anything that matters and let them get some, some experience under their belt. So what do we do?
What do we do, Minnesota? Because most of you out there in this state are conservative. You take out Minneapolis, St. Paul, Duluth, whatever, okay? I'm talking to all of you that are outside of the metro area for sure because I've seen the election maps. And a great deal of you inside the metro area, again, excluding Minneapolis, St. Paul, <laughs> we can do this. We can get people elected to local office that can make a difference, that can hold the line on regulation, that can hold the line on taxes, that can beat it back and tell city staff, no, we're not doing that. That's not why I was elected. I'm not doing it. But we don't. You know, our founders, many of them were asked specifically to make a sacrifice for their country, to spend time away from home, whether it was writing the, the, the Constitution and, and, or whether it is serving in a state house or the federal legislature or as president or Ben Franklin going overseas and spending time in France as, as the ambassador over there and, and working things out, uh, you know, so that, that we could have an ally through the revolution. We had people that stood up and were willing to sacrifice to do the right thing. Not just some flim-flam person that needs power to feel good about themselves. I'm talking about real principled people. But yet, you know, and, and I understand society works us, they work us hard. It's hard to keep up with all the bills. It's hard to keep up with all the taxes. It's hard to keep up with all of the things that are required of us to be a good family person, to be a, a, a good community person. But you know what? Part of that is standing up and volunteering. It takes three to seven hours a month to be on an advisory commission. Everybody's got that. Everybody. And you know what? It takes a little more of a commitment to be on a city council. And that's not for everybody. But some of you are going to find when you get on these commissions that it is for you and that you would like to make a bigger difference. But you'll never know unless you actually sacrifice a little bit of time and, and get on an advisory commission and, and get your feet wet. We can help with that. We can help find the cream of the crop across this state to keep taxes and regulation not only low, but to reduce them. So what do you do? Get a hold of us. We'll come out and speak to your group. If you anywhere across the state of Minnesota, we will sit down with you and we will come up with a plan for you to be able to, to find the right people to put an organization together that you are going to be able to attract people and train them. We have all this free information via our blog and our podcast that you can pass along to other people. We want to know what's happening in your community. We want to know if they're spending money on, on dumb stuff out of these bills. We want to know if, if they're consolidating power, if they're, they're increasing regulation. Get a hold of us. You can do that at commsolutionsmn at gmail.com. That's commsolutionsmn at gmail.com. Because if you're not going to do it, nobody's going to do it. That's the attitude you have to have. If I don't stand up, nobody's standing up. Be the one. Be the first one to stand up in your community. Be the first one to get on an advisory commission. Be the first one to run for city council. We can do this. We can do this if we come together. So get a hold of us because we're doing everything that we can do from right here in these chairs and outside of them to make sure that we help this state get a little bit of common sense back and to be more balanced in line with the actual political makeup of this state. We can do it, Minnesota. We love you. And now it's your turn to get to work.
get too caught up.